Speaking section. The speaking section tests your ability to communicate in English in an academic setting. During the test, you will be presented with four speaking questions. The questions ask for a response to a single question, a talk, or a lecture. The prompts and questions are presented on time. You may take notes as you listen, but notes are not graded. You may use your notes to answer the questions. Some of the questions ask for a response to a reading passage and a talk or a lecture. The reading passages and the questions are written, but the directions will be spoken. Your thinking will be evaluated on both the fluency of the language and the accuracy of the content. You will have 15 to 20 seconds to prepare and 45 to 60 seconds to respond to each question. Typically, a good response will require all of the response time and the answer will be complete by the end of the response time. You will have about 17 minutes to complete the speaking section. A clock on the screen will show you how much time you have to prepare each of your answers and how much time you have to record each response. You will now be asked a question about a familiar topic. After you hear the question you will have 15 seconds to plan your response and 45 seconds to speak. Is it okay for friends to have different opinions and remain friends? Explain your thoughts with specific examples and details. You will now read a short passage and then listen to a conversation on the same topic you will then be asked a question about the passages after you hear the question you will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak you have 45 seconds to read the passage below. Listen to two students discussing this article. What do you think about canceling the new student information sessions? I'm not sure I agree with canceling them. Oh, really? Why is that? Well, we may not need to know all that info right away, but some of it was really useful. Yeah, I suppose so. For instance, I learned about the student book fair where you can buy used books from other students. Right, the book fair. I went to that too, after learning about it. Yeah, instead of just buying all new books at the bookstore, I got used ones much cheaper from students at the fair. Me too. It saved a lot of money. But what about the claim that all that info is on the website? Sure, but I just don't see students actually using the website like that. When's the last time you looked things up there? Um, I guess never really. Exactly, me neither. Most students probably wouldn't bother if they canceled the sessions. Yeah, who has time for that with all our classes and activities? Right, I just don't think students would look it up online, so they'd miss out on important information without those sessions. The woman expresses her opinion about the proposal described in the letter. Briefly summarize the proposal. Then state her opinion about the proposal and explain the reasons she gives for holding that opinion.
You will now read a short passage and then listen to a lecture on the same topic. You will then be asked a question about the passage. After you hear the question you have 30 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. You have 45 seconds to read the passage below. You may begin reading now. Now listen to part of a lecture in a psychology class. Today I want to discuss rational ignorance by giving you two personal examples. The first example is when I recently bought a new car. For such a major purchase, I spent a lot of time thoroughly researching different car models and brands. I carefully looked at the pros and cons of several options before finally deciding which specific car to buy. It was important for me to make an informed choice on this big investment. However, my second example shows a completely different approach to an unimportant, routine purchase. Just yesterday, I needed to get some batteries for a flashlight. At the store, there were four or five different battery brands to choose from made by different companies. Now, I'm sure, some battery. Brands maybe last a bit longer than others are slightly higher quality, or cost a little more or less. But do you think I stood there reading all the small print on each battery package to compare them, or ask the employees a bunch of questions about the battery differences? Of course not. That would be a waste of time because, frankly, all those batteries probably work about the same and last a similar amount of time for the small cost. I didn't want to spend 10 minutes scrutinizing which batteries were supposedly the best when the differences were so minor and negligible. I simply grabbed the first batteries I saw and purchased those. That was the rational decision for such an unimportant purchase. So in summary, the time and effort researching a purchase should match the importance and cost of that purchase. Extensive research for major investments, but willful ignorance is rational for trivial, cheap purchases. Describe how the professor's lecture example demonstrates the idea of rational ignorance. You will now listen to part of a lecture, you will then be asked a question about it after you hear the question you will have 20 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. Listen to part of lecture in a biology class. In our discussion on the physical characteristics of animals in the wild, we must not overlook the young ones who require the utmost protection from predators. 
These young animals possess specific features that aid their survival, although these features are temporary until they reach adulthood. One crucial aspect is camouflage, where many young animals possess attributes that help them blend seamlessly into their environment, making it difficult for predators to spot them. For instance, baby lions are born with spotted fur, enabling them to conceal themselves within the African grasslands. Even before they can walk, these spots allow them to lie among the grasses, making it challenging for predators to detect them. Additionally, young animals also possess temporary physical features that assist them in moving swiftly and efficiently in their surroundings, aiding their escape from predators. However, as they mature and acquire new skills for self-protection, these additional physical features gradually disappear. Let's consider an intriguing example of a bird species that primarily resides in water. The baby birds, incapable of flight, possess what appears to be a finger-like structure at the end of their wings. This appendage enables them to climb trees or bushes to escape from danger. As they grow and develop, their wings fully form, allowing them to fly. In summary, the young animal's special features serve as their means of survival and protection. These features include camouflage for blending into the environment and temporary physical attributes for swift movement. However, as they mature, these temporary features vanish and they acquire other skills to safeguard themselves. Using the examples from the lecture, explain two features that the professor demonstrates that help young animals survive in the wild.